In today's battle, we are taking on this user. I don't really want to pronounce that name, but you can see that he has the full legendary team right here on compromise. I mean, this man has got the whole collection. He just said he pulled up and said, "I want to get the full legendary team right here." And um, you know, I, I, when I started taking this guy on, I was kind of concerned. Not really because of the other Pokemon, but more so because of the Kyogre. Because like I said, I just, I hate facing Kyogre. I mean, Kyogre is one of my favorite Pokemon. But like, you know, fighting against it in competitive is so, so annoying because of just how powerful it is. So anyways, I love it Alakazam because I was thinking, if he doesn't leave it like Kyogre or something that's good against it, this could actually reap destruction because a lot of his team will get destroyed by this Alakazam right here. So, I mean, I was kind of concerned about the Hoopa and also the Kyogre, but, you know, of course, he starts with the Kyogre. Really not a bad play if you do have Kyogre, because, like, if you get a good matchup, you know, something's gonna get sacrificed. So, I go right into Amoongus, because I know that Alakazam is not taking a, wa a water spot too well, and I know I need it for later on in this battle, because it's gonna be pretty useful. And even Amoongus with the resistance and high special defense, once again, is already taking the half HP. So, you know, at this point, I'm thinking, well, I could go to Motank in case he goes for Ice Beam because of um, because of my ability to take Fat, which would have the Ice type attacks. But really, if he was smart, he would just go for Water Spot again because, you know, it's going to KO the Amoongus. And if I switch it to something else, it's going to KO that Pokemon. So, you know, I, I decided that it was just, it was probably time to sack the Amoongus. So anyways, I go into Motank and I hope that I can outspeed this guy because, I mean, Motank does have does have base 100 speed although mine doesn't really have that much speed investment so you know if this guy has like a pvp trained kyogre he's probably going to be able to outspeed me so anyways though i go for the t wave and uh i mean i'm praying at this point that this lands because you know if i can get paralysis in this it won't be too much of an issue but unfortunately for me this guy is going to be able to outspeed me and one shots the motank so you know now i'm kind of getting desperate because you know now now i just got Garchomp and Alakazam that can actually really do anything to this Kyogre. So I go into my Garchomp and of course there's this Choice Scarf and uh, I saw to go right for the Outrage and you know I probably would have done this earlier but what was holding me back from uh, doing this is first I can't really get Garchomp in in the first place but even if I do get it in you know if I go for Outrage and he goes into Diancie that's gonna that's gonna suck. So, anyways, though, I do go for the Outrage, and I do land it, although the Kyogre is going to survive. It's not really a surprise, because this is a really, really powerful legendary Pokemon, and it still has 19 base defenses, so it's not like, it's not by any means frail. So, anyways, now I go into Alakazam, because I know Garchomp has done his job. He's brought this Kyogre low enough to where I could probably finish him off with one good Psychic. And, you know, even, even if he somehow manages to survive here... You know, it's not going to be too big a deal because, you know, his water spot shouldn't be hitting too hard um, when he's this low in HP. So anyways, though, we do administer the Psychic and that's enough to take care of the Kyogre. We lost three Pokemon. Half my team got assimilated by it. But, you know, I'd say that we were able to handle it pretty good. Although, I'm not going to lie, if this guy had a final ground on too, that, that would probably be GG for me. Because, I mean, look at this. Like, seriously, he took out half my team with just Kyogre. So, I mean, like, you know, if he had ground on too, nah, that would be, that would be, that would be deadly. So, anyways, he goes into Hoopa, and I go into Mandibuzz here, because I know I resist both of his stabs. Although the truth is, you can't really come into Hoopa too easily because it has the craziest offensive stats in the game in terms of like just sheer power. Now, it's not really the best legendary, I'd say. I mean, there's a reason it's not right now in the Ubers tier. Or maybe, I, I think it is in X and Y, but I know like in later generations it isn't. And that's just because it has so many weaknesses. So you can kind of, you know, you can kind of work around it. Although defensively, I do like its stat um, or its type combination, but offensively, it's not really too great. So, anyways, here I go into Heatran um, after the U-turn, just in case he had, like, something I wasn't expecting. And also because, I mean, Heatran has good enough special bulk to, to really come in after a U-turn. I mean, I probably should have just gone for a foul place. That would have done massive damage, considering that this Hoopla has huge attack. But, you know, I was also kind of scared that he might try switching out, which is kind of what prompted me to go for the... Um, the U-turn. So anyways, here he goes into Cresselia, and I'm thinking there's no way that this guy is going to try staying in. Contrary to my expectations, he does actually stay in and go for an attack, but you know, that's fine. So I, I get the U-turn off, and I, I mean, foul play would be nice, but I don't think it would be, you know, the craziest thing. So here I bring in my Alakazam, and uh, partly I will say it is tempting to try setting up, 
because you know in my opinion like this would be a good time because Cresselia is kind of weak now status does exist which would suck but I mean that's that's all this Cresselia could really do to the Alakazam and uh, you know I could I could get a, a calm mind or two up and then I could start reaping destruction and tearing through this guy's team now not really everything would get torn through but like you know a good majority of it would take quite a big hit but you know I decided to just go for the shadow balls I'm thinking well you know in case this guy has shadow ball himself that would probably be the optimal move here or like you know I don't know I didn't know what he was gonna do and I was thinking well I probably should just take care of this Cresselia right here and right now so it, it wouldn't hurt me to do that so that's what I do I take care of the Cresselia with the two shadow balls maybe I should have set up here it might have not really been that bad of an idea in hindsight but you know I decided not to do that and you know it is what it is so now we're taking care of the Cresselia and his Kyogre. I mean, this guy has his um, Hoopa, although it's it's pretty maimed right now. And uh, you know, I'm kind of thinking if this if I if I will down this guy's team good enough, then I can probably sweep the Alakazam. And that's really Alakazam's main goal in competitive. It's to to just do late game cleans. And uh, right here, I bring in my Heat Dreams. I know that this should have a great matchup against this Diancie. And probably would force a switch. He goes for a trick room, so I mean, I probably could have just gone for a psychic if I really, really had the guts to do it. Although I, I, I really wasn't sure if this was like a Mega Diancy because you know if it was, then I would not be taking a Diamond Storm too well, or really even a Moonblast. Anything that this Diancy would throw out would hurt quite a lot. So you know, I was trying to play it safe. So I know that Alakazam can tear through the rest of this guy's team if it needs to. So anyways, I go right for the stop rocks, primarily because um, I want to make sure that Alakazam can do its late game clean as effectively as possible. Because, you know, like his Hoopa, it could somehow survive a Shadow Ball, so I do want to ensure that that's going to be low enough to where Alakazam can take it down. And then even his Diancie and like all the other Pokemon, like they're, they're not going to like the uh, stop rocks because it could also remove their focus dash. Like the Deoxys, that's that's one of the Pokemon I was kind of concerned about. So you know that's that that's always gonna have its benefits, and that's why I do like running Stunt Rock. So anyways, I I'm glad I switched out there because he went for an earthquake, and I was that was the last move I was expecting to see in Eladios. I was actually kind of expecting him to go for like a surf or something, especially considering that the rain has still been up for quite a while. So it would have made sense, but you know he didn't, and I'm not gonna complain about that. So right here, of course. Your man's gonna go for the U-turn because, you know, I'm kind of thinking if he switches out, it's gonna be good. If he doesn't switch out, it's still gonna be good. Because then I can just bring in Alakazam and go for a Shadow Ball. And, uh, you know, he stays in. I get the U-turn off right here. And, uh, you know, that, 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 that gives me the opportunity to bring in the Alakazam. And uh, I was also thinking if he predicts my heat and goes for an Earthquake, that's gonna be fine. Because I'll still trace his Levitate and, uh, you know, I'll be immune to it. So really Alakazam... Is going to be a great play here, unless unless he goes for a shadow ball like he did with his hoopa against my mandibus. Like if he somehow makes a crazy prediction or read or whatever that was, you know it would not be good. So anyways, he actually goes for a fly, and that that really was not what I expected. But I mean, I was thinking, well, this is probably a good time to switch out because you know I I want to keep my Alakazam at good HP because I know it's going to be really important for the rest of this game. And a Pokemon like Mandibuzz can basically eat up the fly and, you know, be completely unaffected by it. And then I could also just roost and get all the HP back up. So, you know, it, 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 you can't go wrong with that. So anyways, he goes for another fly. I'm not really sure what this guy is thinking. And what this tells me is that, like, really, he's just relying on the, uh, the power of his Pokemon to carry him to the competitive scene. Because, like, clearly, like, it, these, these plays are, are really not the best. So anyways, he goes for a fly again. I decided to just go for a roost because, you know, it, it can't hurt you to keep your Mandibuzz at good HP. And I mean, it is tempting to just attack because I'm trying to get this over with too. Because, you know, getting this Latios done with would, uh, would just open me up to the last Pokemon of this guy's team. But, you know, like I said, Latios really isn't something I need to deal with it immediately. Especially because Alakazam can come, on, come in and finish him off with a Shadow Ball. So... You know, really, I can kind of take my time here. And I, I, I don't want to make any dumb mistakes, especially considering that I have half my team right now. So anyways, though, I did go for the foul play there. So I was thinking, well, you know, it's, it's probably time to start attacking. And uh, I, I went for the U-turn so I could bring my Alakazam in. I, I, it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, foul play would have worked too. But, you know, that's that's what I decided to do here. And uh, there, there goes the Latios. And... Uh, now, and, and now actually I decided to, to consider the uh, heat drain, but 
I decided to just go into the Alakazam. It just makes sense because, I mean, his team has basically been whittled down. Like, the only thing that can really come into Alakazam now is going to be the, this guy's, um, what do you call it? His, uh, Diancy or Diancy. I, I don't really know. But, I mean, clearly that, that doesn't really have anything scary because when he, uh, first pulled it out, it just went for a trick room. So, that, that really isn't that, you know, intimidating, contrary to what I was expecting. So anyways, he pulls out the Hoopa here, and I have to take some time to tank here, because, I mean, I'm looking at the Focus Blast, because for some reason, I'm just not too comfortable with the Shadow Ball. I'm not too confident, but, you know, then I was thinking, well, this does have 175 base special attack, so it, there's no way it doesn't take care of this Hoopa right here. I mean, it is, it is kind of intimidating, because, like, Hoopa is a really powerful legendary Pokemon, but, you know, I, I decided to just wing it and go for the... Shadow Ball, and of course I can't go for Psychic because it is a uh, part Dark type. So, anyways, we take care of the Hoopa, which is which is nice. And uh, now he pulls out his um, his Deoxys. And like I said, the uh, the good thing about the uh, Stout Rocks is that it will uh, it will do some damage initially. So, in case this guy was running Focus Sash, that would be eliminated right there. And you know. Normally, when you see this Deoxys, you're going to think, well, this is going to outspeed everything. But Alakazam is actually one of the few Pokemon that has a speed tie with Deoxys. I think Mega Aerodactyl and uh, maybe one other Pokemon have speed tie. I, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's Electrode or something like that. But, you know, because uh, this has full speed investment, I uh, I got the, the outspeed right there. And that was great. So now he just has his Diancy. And uh, I go for a Psychic. It brings him down to half HP. It's not a surprise that he survives because, like, Diancy or Diancy has crazy defenses. But, you know, I, w I was kind of surprised there, though. It's like, once he started tearing through my team with that Kyogre, I thought it was going to be GG. But, you know, somehow, somehow we were able to bring it back. And I gotta say, Alakazam really did shine in this battle because it really does clean through the rest of this guy's team. So here he goes for a Flail, and uh, I finish him off with a Psychic. So that right there is GG.